Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. On today's video, I am featuring the just released JRB Rice Papers. They are gorgeous and they are currently available on my website, www.createyourowncozy.com and will be coming into my booth in Angry Mama's Antiques and Interiors. But today I am gonna do some DIY decor with thrifted items. If you wanna see what I come up with, stick around. Let's start with project number one. I had upcycled these wooden picture frames last fall for the Santa paper and it didn't sell, but I wasn't sad because I had two of them and I kind of have wanted to keep them for myself. So I thrifted these frames. I felt like they were gonna be bleeders. So I went over them with Salvation Solution and after that, I did one solid coat of the color Prairie Gray. This is one of my favorite dark neutrals. Use my water mister to reactivate the paint. And then I went over it with faded burlap and did some blending. And guys, this is one of my favorites. So I am going to be keeping these two frames after I upcycle them for my own space because I find them to be gorgeous but I just love how these two colors blended together, the prairie gray and the faded burlap. After that was completely dry and I was happy with the blending, I could use my water mister to reactivate and do any blending. Then when I was happy with it, I went over it with DIY's liquid patina. It is a little bit more of a muted finish than Big Top and that is sealing the paint in so it doesn't get reactivated. Now it's time to use two of the new JRV papers. I'm cutting them down to size using the prior picture as a template and I'm just using my paper cutter to make it life a little bit easier. I am so happy with how these two pictures look in these frames. These colors are the colors that I'm intending to do for my dining room. So stay tuned to see where I style them in my home. I don't know if you guys caught my extra video for the month of January but I showed you my stash and how I organized it. And can I just say how convenient it is to, first of all, know everything I have, be able to get to it. So when it's time to create, I'm not like running around like a crazy person. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find some things to use. Now, if this didn't have a D on it and my name wasn't Davis, I probably would have cover that up but i'm going to save that for another project but these are the blanks that i'm going to use for these projects so right here this i paid 25 cents for it you guys know that's a deal at the craft store there are way more than that i am just going along the edges with gypsy green i felt like gypsy green was the exact right green i was going for to match up with these little bunny papers I did paint white swan over any of the spaces that the rice paper was going to go so that the image would be as vibrant as possible. I don't know guys, these bunnies, I said I wasn't ready for bunnies, but guess what I am now because these bunnies are so precious. Now rice paper is a little bit thicker than decoupage paper and 
you'll see that I put one layer of liquid patina on here and then I need to kind of bulk it up a little bit for the rice paper to grab well. So it's kind of, you'll, you'll just, when you're doing it, you'll figure it out. You guys are smart people. <laughs> But if it doesn't stick, then just add a little bit more. So I wanted the ears to be at the top, so I kind of centered it where I wanted it to go. As you can see, it really didn't stick up there, so I just added another sticky layer, and there we were. So I am going over the top. I found that the rice paper, I don't have as many issues with air bubbles as decoupage paper, just because it's a little bit thicker. Make sure the liquid patina has dried completely before you try sanding the edge. You'll see that because of the way that the little edge is here, I'm having trouble hitting the right edge with this little sanding block thing. But I am very happy with the cuteness of this little plaque. The easel is something I found in my stash as well and just did a coat of crockery to have it blend in. The next project, I'm gonna use two of the four bunnies on this next piece of paper. What I like is there's not an obvious line in between the two, so if you want to do them side by side, you can. I went ahead and cut them all up into individual hindsight. I wish I wouldn't have done that for the next project, but for this project, I am sticking with Gypsy Green, I'm going to bring all these into my booth to showcase the new papers and thought that they would look good if they all went together. So Gypsy Green on the edges, white in the center, doing liquid patina in the center. I just went ahead and did the whole thing so all the white would be sealed. And I kept the crisp edges on these particular ones. You could also kind of wet the edges and rip off the edges so it looked more like an organic paper tear. Then I have some IOD trimmings molds that kind of fit the space. It didn't cover it completely. I just used some cornstarch and the DAS clay. This pair of bunnies had a more subtle pink, so I wanted to bring out the vintage pink that I used in last week's DIY video. I just very carefully painted that strip pink so that I wouldn't have to be as careful when it was time to paint the molds. And I just did one coat so it would be on there already. I was trying to decide, do I wanna paint it first and then glue it or just glue it and paint the whole thing? In the end, decided you know what, I think it's best to paint the plaque first, glue the trimmings, and then be able to paint the trimmings on top and not have to be as careful with that line. And then I used the type on quick and thick, and I tried to put as much glue over the surface area of the mold as possible and tried to make them kind of mirror each other on each side so that, that there was a bit of symmetry. This was not um, a perfect mold for sure, but I'm going with the perfectly imperfect. I do not create precious and perfection. I prefer an aged and found look. That is what I'm trying to create here. Obviously, it's not found if I'm making it, but you you know what I you, you know what I mean. I realized I put them on upside down because I do want them to kind of be symmetrical just so it's pleasing to the eye so i'm making sure i'm painting the pink first making sure it's dry before i glue it on it just helps make it a more seamless process found these little mini easels in my little clean out they were from a home depot kids project that we did for free and obviously they're very colorful Covered it with two coats of crockery and have nice little neutral stands for these things. I am going to price them separately in case somebody has 
a different idea, but if they want the whole thing, that is cool as well. Sealing the gypsy green with liquid patina. And then this next step might be a little controversial. I know that this pink and green look really good together. And my thought is, oh, what if I love the dark wax? And then I was like, what if I hate it? So I'm going for it, guys. I'm adding dark wax. Um, the vintage pink has a top coat on it, so it wipes off easier. If I had used a DIY paint, I would make sure I sealed it before I did the dark wax, just so it can be a nice, subtle look. I am going over both the green and the pink and the little edges of the picture just so it looks a little bit older. My lines and my painting was not super crisp and this was my way to kind of hide that and make this look like an older looking project. And I'm going to show you right here. There's the what if I wouldn't have added dark wax? What if I did? Honestly, I'm not regretting it. I'm glad I tried it. I like it in the end with the dark wax, but if you don't like that step, just stick with the crisp pink and natural looking gypsy green because that is such a gorgeous combination as well. So obviously I did both, so they match. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Did I ruin it with the dark wax? or did I make it look more interesting? For project number four, I'm gonna use the other two bunnies on that piece of paper. I'm going to use this decorative cutting board and I ended up using the other side. I did not like the way this little cutout portion was hitting where my paper was. I was hoping my paper would cover it exactly. So I'm just painting it one coat of white swan on both sides and then decided to go ahead and put the bunnies on here. Now these bunnies would look great side by side. I should not have cut them down the center. I am attempting to mirror them up. You can kind of see where the cut line is. I did line it up as best I could. You can use the two bunnies horizontally together and they look like they belong together. There's not like a line where it looks like you need to cut it. So I'm really liking that about this little four bunny rice paper. This one might be one of my favorites. These bunnies are all super cute. Now these flowers are a little brighter than the last project that I did. I still hadn't quite decided what I wanted to do with the rest of this cutting board. I thought that once I got it on here, the white kind of washed them out. So I grab the IOD trimmings mold again and use the DAS clay again to kind of flank the pictures and see if that helped. And then I was like, you know what? Um, since I'm using the back, I do need to cover up like the little hanging spot. So I am getting out my primitives mold and doing like a little greenery swag i ended up casting two of these one was longer one was shorter and then i ended up using the scrap clay to kind of fill in that gap so that we didn't have any challenges later on loving quick and thick for my molds getting the top part on there because i knew that whatever color it was that was all going to be the same color but then decided, let's just stick with Gypsy Green. I wanted to paint the, paint the trimmings mold first because I did not want to get paint all over my rice paper. So I did two coats of the Gypsy Green, got the paint dry, but not necessarily the clay dry, and then decided, you know what? I think that this paper is going to stick out so much better if Everything but the paper was gypsy green, and I was totally right. I feel like it make the, makes the bunnies pop so much more. 
So I'm covering as much of the surface area with glue. You can see there's a little injury at the bottom there and it stretched out a little bit and so I kind of just squinched it back together. That's the great part about still using the clay when it is wet. I'm going over all that gypsy green with a liquid patina to seal it in and then I'm trying to decide I need something else to make this look a little bit more interesting. I'm not going with two-tone paint but I decided to go with white wax. Now I'm showing you what you should do. DIY products do not have preservatives so technically with paint and waxes you should put what you're going to use in a separate container so that you don't double dip and add bacteria to the mix. I don't do that often because I feel like I go through the stuff quickly, maybe not so quick on the white wax. So I'm trying to heavily wax the spaces so there is some beautiful white in the crevices. I wipe it back with a paper towel and I am so happy with the look of this. I think it is just, it's interesting. I love adding white wax to, to things and then wiping it back just to make it look a little interesting. I did end up putting wax over the whole paper just so if I accidentally got, got some on there, it wouldn't look out of place. And then I went and grabbed my ribbon that I used from Christmas to put through the hole at the top. This one is cute. What do you guys think? For my fifth and final project, I found two gold frames in my stash that went really well with two of the new papers. Now, it took a lot for me to not paint these and distress the gold back. I'm showing restraint, guys, and I'm realizing maybe I need to provide a little bit different style and people might buy it as is. So I'm using the glass insert to kind of decide which portion of the picture I want in the center and want to cut off. That is the great thing about the glass insert. You can still see what your picture is going to be. Now this particular one did not have anything that made it lay flat. So I cut up part of a cardboard box, added a second piece to make it tight and felt like that made the paper lay well. The next one are these beautiful peonies. Gosh, this one's gorgeous guys. Now I know that the gold brings out more of the yellows in the pictures. I'm pretty sure that some of those greens would pop if we added a different frame color. Might be seeing that in the future, but I feel like this paper is really versatile. The thing that I really like about this thrifted frame is this glass does not have a glare on it and it made photographing it so much easier. What do you guys think of these last two? I know they're easy, but it just shows how quickly you can make some gorgeous art.
So what did you guys think? Did you have a favorite project or a favorite paper? Let me know in the comments below. I know my favorite project was project number one. I did an extra video this week on Monday where I upgraded, cleaned out a space in my basement. And I gave you a little hint that next month I'm gonna be working on my dining room. And the colors that I have planned in my dining room mimic the colors of project number one. So I'm very excited to get to keep those and get inspired by those. If you like these papers, they will be in my booth at Angry Mamas Antiques and Interiors, and they will be on my website, www.createyourowncozy.com. Now, these papers, if you order on my website, like right now or this weekend, I will get them out first thing Monday morning. Thankfully, I know a couple of um, weeks ago, I told you I was going on a girl's trip. Well, it got canceled at the last minute because of all the ice and snow on the mountain roads. And we had to be safe and smart and stuff. So thankfully it wasn't just canceled, it was postponed. So as you're watching this, hopefully, I will be in the mountains relaxing and taking some time with just my friends and coming back on Monday, ready to ship those out if you guys purchase from me on my website. I wanted to say thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, I would love it if you would consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell to all so you get notified with the expected and the surprise videos that I put out and sharing with your people if you think that they would also love this space. Guys, I am so thankful for you. I hope that you are having fun, enjoying your cleaned out spaces. I hope you're encouraged to tackle them an hour at a time, as I know that I have enjoyed creating this week with that space dealt with. Woo! Feels so good. Anyway, um, I am thankful for you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!